Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Daylan Yanagida, and we are broadcasting live from the Think Tech Studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. And while there, please subscribe to our programs and get in our mailing list. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And our guests share with us their journey to building successful businesses right here at home. In the Think Tech Studios today are Jamie Lum, Branch Chief Business Development and Support Division at the Business of at the Department of Business and Economic Development and Tourism. I'm better known as DBED, and I think I'm going to go with DBED. <laughs> <laughs> and Her Hermine Katlavan, a professional fellow that's hosted by DBED. Um, ja Jamie and Hermine, thank you so much for being with me today on the show. Um, I think that. That Hermine, you you have a story that yes. tells about DBED in in and of itself, and and the opportunities that yes. we're trying to create. So I'd love for you folks to start with um, who you are and what you do, and and how you got here. Thank you. You want me to start, and then yeah. I'll. Uh, um, thank you for having us, Dalen. Appreciate it. Um, I am Jamie Lum. I've been with DBED for uh, thirty years. Uh, but half that time uh, before going to the business development side, I was with tourism, handling tourism product development. So I have some of that background. Um, but since being with the business development side, um, the last few years we have been uh, concentrating on exporting and helping uh, companies that want to export. So um, that's basically where I put majority of my efforts right now. And uh, uh, we have Hermina here who is with the... Um, a fellowship program with the State Department, and I'd like her to talk a little bit about yes. that so she can. Yeah. Please Thank do. You. Uh, as you introduced me, I'm Hermine from Armenia. I work here at the State De uh, I, I am here for the State Department and American Council's program, Professional Fellow Program. I applied to learn more about economic policy making and economic policy implementation. That's why my workplace here is Department for Business Development and Tourism. And for one month, I learned a lot from uh, the Department of Business and Economic Development and Tourism. Thank you. I think it's really amazing, and it um, it really drives home what DBED is is trying to do with export and encouraging our local businesses to partake in export. And by um, putting our the, our money where our mouths are, by welcoming um, interns from other countries to learn about. Um, how how we how how we welcome um, the opportunity to do business across across the the waters. Um, for me, when when we were talking before the show, you were mentioning that uh, Hawaii's program is is actually one of the the top choices. Tell tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I really admire how you, how you here uh, treat small businesses, especially family businesses. I was in a consultation with family business consisting for members, and uh, it's actually small business, not too much importance for the country, but the, the department and the Small Business Administrative Center, they are trying to enhance the business and help the business to enter and to penetrate new markets, expert markets, and to sell globally. It was admiring. I think under the direction of you, Jamie, and Mark Ritchie, who was yes. formerly on our show, mm -hmm. um, um, you were mentioning that uh, you, your, the assignment that you gave Hermina. Right. So we asked, um, uh, because you know we've been doing the, the step, high step program since 2011, uh, but we really started uh, gathering uh, statistics, uh, really good, solid statistics, I would say, since about 2016. But we hadn't had a chance to really kind of take a broad you know, step back and, and look at the, the trends and so forth and what that means for our, uh, what we're trying to do with High Step. So we asked Hermina to um, look at all of that and, and she did a very good job at analyzing um, the, the results and the types of companies that have participated and what that kind of means in our approach. So um, maybe she can yes. share some We'd of We'd love to hear about yes. what you found and why expansion programs are important and and all about Hawaii's exports and, and what you can tell us, please. Yes, actually, first of all, it was an honor for me to work with this program. 
And at the end, I decided that uh, with the help of the debate, I will take this experience to my country and we will implement another program, <laughs> the same program actually, but designed for my country. So it's really nice experience which I had here. And it, it actually teach me a lot how important is expert expansion and expert promotion for a small state or small country like my country. I am, I am just so impressed uh, that um, uh, an intern is going to come in and really dig deep and learn about um, what, what, what Hawaii's export market is like and, um, and that we can learn from you about our, our own state of business. And so um, please tell me about your findings. Yes, first of all, I find that uh, uh, expert expansion and promotion program is very important in uh, improving companies' capacity and companies' performance in exporting through increasing export sales value, acquiring new markets, um, increasing the quality of product, increasing the return on assets, and overall contributing to profit. It's really significant contribution to especially small and medium uh, type businesses. And what did you find about Hawaii's primary exports? Where are we? Uh, for the year of 2018, in uh, Hawaiian global shipments, the highest value uh, performed uh, actually uh, the, uh, the following products, like cold water shrimps and pounds. Uh, then it, it comes uh, unflavored and non-sweetened water. Then fresh fruits, macadamia nuts, and uh, beef cut. Actually, I, I would like to indicate that those uh, products are Hawaiian made. They are not re-export from the state. And I also find like uh, that high step programs really try to uh, differentiate the export of merchandise. And the, program, uh, the companies which are beneficial from the program, they are mainly uh, operating in the manufacturing field and they export different food like coffee, tea, beverage, jewelry, apparel, and they also sell different services from the in, uh, scientific and technical industry, art, entertainment, creation, and also enterprise and company management. So uh, the con contribution and the uh, impact of high step program is huge for companies and for all overall state export. I think what it helped show was um, that the kind of companies that are participating in our program are um, in areas that are not, um, you know, didn't make the top list. So it, it, I think it helps in trying to promote, uh, get those companies out there so that yeah. those particular um, sectors can, you know, increase the, the sales globally. Um, so I, I, hopefully it shows that we're um, heading in the right direction with the kind of companies that are participating and the kind of shows and, and um, that we're participating in. What did you find out about Hawaii's export markets? Yes. For the state, the main export market is South Korea. Uh, then it's uh, Japan, Singapore, Malaysia, China, and uh, Taiwan. But in case of high step beneficial companies, it's Japan in contrast of uh, state market. And actually, for me, it's a really high standard and good indicator because Japan has really high standards for uh, entering market, standards for the good quality and service uh, quality for services. And they also have a lot of regulatory barriers for companies, like, for example, certification, labeling, or licensing. And if companies which are beneficial from high step programs, can enter and penetrate Japan market, it means that they are really able to deal with these uh, tough regulatory barriers and they are able to sell high quality goods and services in the Japanese market. And they also trying to enter new markets. For example, the last three years, they tried to enter European market, Canadian market, market of Australia, which are really big markets and give them a lot of opportunity to sell more and more. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, Jamie, are, are those results indicative of what you, uh, what DBED thought you would find? I don't know that we really had any uh, particular goals in mind in terms of 
um, you know, what kinds of markets or what kind of products. Um, the overall goal of the program really is just to increase the number of companies that are exporting and um, for them to be able to penetrate more markets. Um, and so, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what we are uh, aiming for. But I think that um, in what um, Hermine was able to find out is that I, it, it seems that the strategies that we've, we've, we're taking um, are, you know, helping the companies uh, really prepare for, uh, you know, global markets, mm -hmm. you know, and being, and being successful in exporting their, their products. Hermine, I know you also found out a few things about why export promotion in Hawaii is so important. What, yes. what can you tell us? Yeah. Actually, general talking export is very important for economic development of any country. Because, like, uh, sustained export sale helps to keep growing uh, gross domestic product, to provide growing employment opportunities for state, and it also helps to decrease poverty. It improves balance of payment, and it helps to generate money for other for further development and improvement of economic conditions. It can also generate more tax tax income, which state can use for different uh, social program implementation. Uh, in case of Hawaii, actually, uh, like import of Hawaii, for example, for this specific year of 2018, the import exceeded export more than six times, and it means that it's crucial for, especially for the state of Hawaii, to continue. Uh, the implementation of uh, export expanding programs, which helps companies to overcome and to deal with different export obstacles or perceived export obstacles and hard uh, difficulties. How, how, how are the results that you found different from your country? Oh, well, actually, when I, when I got my placement in Hawaii, I was, oh, it's so different <laughs> state from my country because Armenia is landlocked country, no access to sea. But actually coming here, I found out that small and medium time, uh, the type businesses have the same programs like my country. They are also <laughs> have different problems with logistics. And they are also like they don't have uh, enough money to penetrate new markets. Uh, so they have a hard time with it. Uh, also, like sometimes small businesses, and uh, they don't have enough knowledge what they don't know. For example, they don't realize what they need to know before starting to export. So I find these um, high step seminars and trainings very helpful for small businesses because they don't have their own money to spend it on this kind of knowledge. So it's, so it's very helpful. We do have to go to a short break, but when we come back, I would love for the both of you to share really about High Step and, and the, the, the meat of, of your program. Sure. Um, I know that there's going to be some um, exciting rollouts very soon, and so I'd love for um, your viewers to hear about that. We are going to take a short break. This is Business in Hawaii. We'll see you back here shortly. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At The Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at The Crossroads. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at one o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha.
Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. With us today are Jamie and Hermine from DBED. Thank you for being so forgiving with, with my no, pronunciation no, of your last perfect. name. <laughs> and of course, of the department. <laughs> um, but before we went to break, we were talking about the amazing results that, that you found after analyzing some data that the state had been collecting over a number of years um, that really called attention to um, export and its importance to Hawaii and really what those markets look like for us. Um, I, I do have a non-scientific question for you, and that would be ha having been born and raised in a completely different culture, how do you see Hawaii's culture in, in, and its influence on your thoughts on, um, on, on business and on programs? Yeah, I, I really feel lucky that I'm in Hawaii. Uh, and I had the opportunity, and yet for three days I have opportunity to experience this aloha spirit. Thank you so much. I found Hawaii very hospitable, very friendly state. Here people always helpful, trying to help you, trying to share you with everything they have without like expecting anything back. So I really like this culture, and I think like uh, sometimes uh, the expert also benefited from this spirit of sharing love and friendship with others. As um, someone who was born and raised here, and, and Jamie, I know that you know you you were born and raised here as mm -hmm. well. Um, but it, it it really makes me proud um, that we open up our arms to um, different cultures and sharing that, and and then taking in their their expertise and their knowledge and right. learning from them. Right. Um, so that makes me really proud yeah. that the state of Hawaii is committed to that. Yeah. Well, we've been very fortunate to have her. I mean, it's the first time that uh, in our business development division that we've had a, a State Department fellow. Uh, I know our energy office and maybe some of the other um, divisions and agencies have had um, a fellow, but um, so we're very, very fortunate to have her so and have her take such an interest in the high step. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you we're for lucky sharing to have you. with me we're everything. Um, Jamie, when we were setting up for the show, I also mentioned to you, it's surprising to me, we had Mark Ritchie on the show, we had um, Lyle Fujikawa on the mm -hmm. show, um, that so many people are not aware of the excellent programs, um, support and resources that DBED provides. And I'd really like for you to share with your viewers about High Step because I think that quite a few people may not know about it. I, there are a very specific group of people who mm -hmm. understand it, but um, you're, you're embarking upon exciting times. I'd love for you to share that with us. Sure. Well, High Step is a program that's funded by the Small Business Administration through a grant that we apply for every year. Uh, the program started in 2011. And we've been fortunate to receive a grant every year except for one. So this is the eighth year of the program and our seventh year of receiving funds. So the intent of the program when the legislation was passed by Congress was to help small businesses in the U.S. Um, to export more. As Ramina said, it, it helps the economy if our, um, if we, and, um, in the U.S. and in Hawaii, as she pointed out, we do need to close that gap between imports and exports. So that's when we see more prosperity in, in our economy. So uh, the program is intended for companies that are um, maybe never exported before, but are looking at it as a way of expanding their business to those that already export, but looking to expand into other markets. Um, it's intended for small businesses of which, you know, 98% of the companies in Hawaii will, will um, qualify for. So uh, there are standards in terms of um, being able to qualify for the program, but most companies can, um, can uh, qualify. And then um, how we've uh, devised the program is we have three components. So our first component is what we call our export readiness, which is export training seminars and business advising. So like Hermina pointed out, um, a lot of companies, um, you know, they don't have money um, to invest in themselves to learn about exporting. So we've made that available using our partner organizations, um, like uh, we use the Hawaii Pacific Export Council uh, as one of our partners, but we also uh, work with um, the, the local U.S. As, um, Small Business Administration, the Small Business Development Center, uh, the Mink Center, which is the Women's Business Center, and Innovate Hawaii. So these are um, our partners. Um, uh, so HPAC, Pacific Export Council, uh, 
we put together a schedule of training uh, programs, and, um, and those we carry out monthly from January through June. They're various topics, export related, um, either by uh, issues involved in exporting, like logistics, financing, so forth, um, or market um, specific, Japan, Korea, and so forth. So we have those, and then we have, um, we utilize our partners to be like business consultants for um, companies. So they can, um, they can take a company that's very new and maybe needs help more with establishing their business all the way to those that might have very uh, specific export related um, issues um, and help them to um, develop an export plan or um, maybe um, uh, help refocus their export plan. So that's our export readiness. Um, we also do what we call Hawaii pavilions where we organize um, a group of Hawaii companies and we take them to trade shows and we exhibit under the Hawaii banner. So we find that that's very um, powerful to use the Hawaii brand to bring companies together. Um, and um, so it's, you know, it's usually buyer shows. So they're looking for buyers, you know, to, to take their products into various markets. Um, and then the last component is what we call our company assistance, uh, which is um, funds that we make available for companies um, that want to do other types of activities outside of what we have as part of High Step and um, implement portions of their export plan, maybe go to a different trade show or do some um, sales calls in another country. Um, it is a competitive um, uh, basis. It's, it's awarded on a competitive basis. So um, we have that going on right now. So um, if we can put up uh, the slide one, it just shows the, the three components and kind of how everything overlaps. Basically, what we're trying to do is build a pipeline for companies, um, starting out with just getting them ready for exporting or tooling up. Or, um, and then um, once they go through the export training and the business advising, then they can um, participate in, in any of the other components, the, the, our, our Hawaii pavilions, which are the trade shows and um, consumer shows, and then our uh, direct financial assistance. Um, if you go to the slide two, it'll show uh, our website. So if a company is interested in High Step, they would go to our website and we have uh, an online registration form. Um, basically, it's not an application. So um, in the sense that you're not going to get rejected unless somehow you don't fit the qualifications. But it's so that we can get information on your company, uh, find out where you're at in terms of being uh, in your exporting, if there are particular issues and so forth. And that way we can help um, direct you to the right um, partner for advising. And then um, uh, once you submit that, then the, the process kind of starts in terms of getting them um, connected with one of our partner organizations. And it also is an indication of what they want to participate in, if they want to go to particular trade shows. or So we, we use that to then um, go out and start recruiting when we um, when we start recruiting for our, our trade show. So we use that for a lot of different. Is there a fee to application or a fee to any of the classes? No, everything is Just offered amazing. at no cost for the classes uh, or the advising. Um, I should say that uh, uh, with the trade shows, there is a participation fee, but we try to keep it to at least a third or less of the cost of what it would be for that company if they were to go into the trade show on their own. So. Um, so much of it is subsidized, um, but yeah, there are no fees. Wow. Um, uh, the other thing, um, the company assistance, that is a separate process. So I just want to make that distinction between um, the online enrollment form for High Step and company assistance. There's a separate process for applying for that. Um, that uh, we do it through a request for proposal that is uh, already issued, and the deadline is January 6th for that. So. Um, companies can go on to our, um, our website and, and um, download the instructions for that. When would be the next time that we would see um, new analytics out of the High Step program? I think that would be interesting and definitely um, serve as a, a way to entice more businesses to um, participate. Uh, we're in the process of you know, gathering all of our 2019 um, data so we'll take that and then um, add that to what 
um, Hermina has already put together and see how, you know, um, what the, the trends are. Are we still um, heading in the right direction? Do we need to tweak our, um, our program at all? So um, probably, you know, early 2020 into mid-2020, depending on when we can wrap up those 2019 statistics and, and see um, you know, where we can add that in. What are some of the uh, trade shows that you already have scheduled to, to go to? Uh, we have coming up in January, actually, we're going to the Surf Expo, which is a, it's in the U.S., but they, uh, there are international buyers. So we do, actually, we do trade shows in Japan, but we have a couple that we do in the U.S. that are international trade shows. So in January, we're doing the Surf Expo that's uh, geared towards not only the sports, uh, uh, surfing and other related types of water sports, but also they promote a lot of the um, resort and uh, lifestyle products. So that's where a lot of our, our companies fit. We have apparel companies that go, skincare um, product companies, um, jewelry, so a whole a, a range of um, those kinds of companies. Uh, we're doing, in March, we're doing for the first time the Natural Products Expo West, which is a, a show that many companies have asked us to do. It's a really huge show and it's difficult to get space, so we're fortunate that we do have a few booths. So um, it's for natural and organic products. So there are a lot of different types of companies that fit under that umbrella. And then in April, uh, we're doing a food show in Japan. Um, so uh, those are the first three that are coming up in 2020. So. You know what's really nice about the partnership um, between your program, the High Step program, um, and of course the businesses that, that do want to um, export to these um, shows is that they, they have someone to go along with, right? I mean, it, it becomes this group endeavor. Right. So that's really nice. Right. So uh, I, I know Armina mentioned that earlier about sharing about in Hawaii. Yeah. Well, we see that in business too. And I think that that's another outcome of the trade shows is actually that the companies help each other. Um, you know, they learn a lot about what each other is doing. And, and, you know, they a lot of them have su suggestions for companies. A lot of them have even partnered on certain things. So a lot of, yeah, a lot of um, that kind of cooperation comes out of these, these trade shows. So. We're, we're just about a, um, out of time, but I do know that High Step is going to do a big launch. Um, tell us about Correct. your event. So on Tuesday, November uh, 19th, that's next week, Tuesday at 9 a.m. at the Foreign Trade Zone, uh, we have our big kickoff uh, for High Step. So we invite companies to come and hear about the program and learn a lot more. Um, as well as meet our partner organizations. They'll all be there and uh, introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their organizations. Um, and we've, we've already done the neighbor island kickoffs. We did that Fantastic. last week, but um, we expect, we have uh, 70, over 75 companies already signed up, so. Fantastic. Yeah. We have a slide that um, we'll share with your viewers uh, mm -hmm. where they can find you. Yes. We could get that up. Um, and while that's there, I wanted to thank Hermine for joining us today but more importantly, for allowing us to share as a state our Aloha spirit with you and that it's obviously touched you and I and that makes me such a proud resident of right. Hawaii. And thank you to DBED for for um, championing that. Um, I wanted to thank both of you mm -hmm. for being with me today. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Thanks to our guests for being here. Amazing production staff in the studio. If you would like to be a guest on the show, please like us and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. We look forward to seeing you here next week.